By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Raging Bull series 2023. We have reached round number two. And in this round, we're going to look at two spectacular decks. We've got Leon from the Netherlands, who's on black and red Nether Void. And I really love it when people just make these allied color decks, you know, just two color decks that make sense to me. I love that, you know, a Badlands deck. I like it. This deck is bad. More about that, of course, in the uh, deck tech section of this video. And then he is playing against Ola, and Ola is from Denmark, and he's got such a cool deck. He usually plays really cool decks, and this tournament he brought a deck uh, with him called Robo Rika. It's uh, blue, it is uh, green, and it also has a little bit of black. So uh, we've got blue, green, we've got Simbats in this deck. It is really super cool. So before um, I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this section. First go to the matches. I know some people prefer to do that and then check out the deck tech after the match. Uh, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps, including a timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that timestamp, or sorry, in that um, uh, description of the video, you will also find more information about the rule set. We're playing uh, according to the Swedish rules here. If you have no idea what that means, and you would like to know what that means, have a look in the description be uh, below. If you don't, also fine, just enjoy the video. And in that same description below, there's also a link to my Patreon page. Uh, you can check that out on patreon.com slash timmytalks if you have a moment. And via that Patreon page, you can become a patron of the show and support me as a content creator. So if you have a moment, take a look at patreon.com slash timmytalks. Okay, the introduction is out of the way. That means we are going to continue with the deck tech section. I'm going to start with the deck of Leon, BR Nettervoort. And here we see the deck of Leo. So this is really your black red deck, right? It has a lot of those usual suspects that uh, that you would find in a black red deck. It has that mana denial plan of Sinkhole and Stone Rain, which is great. It's got the strongest creatures in the colors with Hypnotic Spectre and, of course, the Setch Troll. Setch Troll being great in a deck with black because it gets a plus one, plus one bonus. It's basically a three, three for three with regeneration. I mean, that is huge. But there are four cards in this deck that basically the whole deck is built around. I think it's a fantastic card. It's Nether Void. It's one black and three for an enchant world. All spells are countered unless their caster pays an additional three. So, I mean, this really puts a heavy tax on everything that your opponent, or actually you as well, that whoever is playing the game actually wants to cast. And it works, of course, really well with that mana denial plan, right? So you just destroy the lands of your opponent. So he's already short on lands. And then on top of that, you play this Nether Void and it's going to be close to impossible for your opponent to play anything out. And then if you've got like an early hippie before you play out the Nether Void, right? You can attack with the hippie and then you can, you know, your, your opponent is going to lose the cards that they have in their hand. And, you know, just simply losing the game because they cannot play anything out. And what they still have in their hand, they're going to lose to the Hypnotic Spectre. So that's like a great combination. Um, the rest of the deck, it's really what you would expect, right? We see four Bolts, Shatters, Shatter Storm, which I think those cards can be quite useful against this matchup because I know that Ole is playing with a lot of artifacts. Um, there is one card here that I really want to highlight that's in the main, which I think is awesome to see at a tournament like today. That is Word of Command. Word of Command is an instant for two black. And, you know, I'm just going to read the current oracle text. So not what it says on the card, but the current oracle text. So it says, look at target opponent's hand and choose a card from it. You control that player until word of command finishes resolving. The player plays that card if able. While doing so, the player can activate mana abilities only if they're from lands that player controls and only if mana they produce is spent to activate other mana abilities of lands the player controls and or to play that card. If the chosen card is cast as a spell, you control the player while the spell is resolving. Oh man, this is just... I so hope to see this card being resolved in this match because I'm just curious what actually happens. So he can basically use Word of Command, right, to, for example, force Ola, um, you know, to play a Eureka. You know, he's playing a Eureka deck. So maybe if his hand's really bad, and he, but he does have a Eureka in hand, 
you know, uh, he can decide to, you know what, with my word of command, I'm going to cast at Eureka and you don't have anything big to play out, but I do have a lot of stuff to play out. Like that's, for example, a scenario that could happen. I just think word of command is a super cool card. And there's also a little story attached to the art because uh, apparently Jesper Mirfors was just trying out all sorts of things. And he was also just made this piece of art, basically two eyes, right? And um, uh, 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 Garfield, Richard Garfield saw it and was like, oh, this is so cool. We have to have it on a magic card. And Jesper Mirfors really doesn't like it. I mean, it was never meant to go on a magic card. It wasn't even, according to him, finished. It wasn't really good. But uh, Richard Garfield wanted to put it on. And I think it's really epic. You know, you recognize this card from everywhere, despite the fact that it's on the reserve list and it doesn't see a lot of play. It's pretty iconic. So, um, yeah, really happy, Leo, that you've put this in your deck. It's really cool. Uh, talking about cool, let's have a look at the deck of Ola. And here we see the deck of Ola Robo Rika. And there's actually a lot happening in this deck. Maybe first kind of start with the Rika part of this deck. So that refers to Eureka. There are two Eurekas in this deck. I mean, it's a beautiful card again. It's a sorcery for two green and two from Legends that reads, and again, I'm going to read the current Oracle text. Starting with you, each player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Repeat this process until no one puts a card onto the battlefield. So Eureka decks usually have a lot of high casting cost creatures. And what Ola has done is he combined it with robots, right? Because he's playing with four Triskelions, four Suchis, and three copy artifacts. And I think the nice thing about this is, even without the Eureka, you know, this is a good deck. I mean, you can just really quickly play out your big robots. You can kind of ramp up with your power. There's also a really neat little trick in here where you combine Sylvan Library with, uh, with Simbat so that you can, you know, draw a lot of lands, play out a lot of lands. So that's not gonna be a problem. But of course, if you have that Eureka early, you can deploy it early, right? You can play it out, let's say turn two or turn three, and you've got a trike in hand and some copy artifacts. Things can get out of hand very, very quickly. And I think that's probably what Ola had in mind while he was building this deck. It was like, okay, I want this deck to work without a Eureka, but I also want it to go off as soon as I have that Eureka, you know? So you're constantly looking at that perfect combination, right? I don't want to be dependent of the Eureka. I want to be able to win games without the Eureka, which I think he definitely is if I'm looking at this list. But then again, when he has Eureka, you want to bam, you know, you want to do something impressive. And very important, you want to do something fun. And I think that is the cool thing about this deck. When he's got that Eureka, maybe in combination with Sylvan, he can like just draw those extra cards, have a nice full hand, then cast that Eureka, get a trike on the battlefield, start copying it left, right, and center. And you know, before you know it, I mean, he'll he'll be in full control and he'll be swinging in for, for lethal. Also remember why Citrus Kellyan so good is because it's a 4-4 creature, but of course uh, it's got three plus one plus one counters on it and you can just remove that anytime you want as a fast effect to deal one damage to any target. So, you know, that's ideal. You can swing in for four, then your opponent takes four damage and after the damage is dealt in your second main or at the end of your turn, whenever you want, uh, you can take the counters off and deal an additional three points of damage. So sometimes you may think when you're playing against these decks, right, with a lot of trikes, I'm on like 12, I'm fine. And actually, no, you're not because you're taking a swing of eight from two trikes and then uh, they take the counters off. You take an additional six points of damage and you're dead, right? So when you're playing against these trike decks, and I can tell from experience playing with it myself, playing against trike decks, you got to be really, really care uh, careful. Anyway, um, loving this deck. Also like the Abyss there on the side, uh, in the in the sideboard of Ola, very sneaky. And Living Plane in the sideboard, that is sneaky as well. I think, by the way, they're both in Shant Worlds. He could consider boarding those in after game one uh, against Leo's Nether Voids. That might be an interesting choice. Then again, I mean, Living Plane is super risky against... Uh, a deck with with direct damage, so probably he'll he'll lean more towards the Nether Vo uh, sorry towards the Abyss than towards the Living Plane here in this uh, in this case. But it's interesting, you know, because what happens when there are two Enchant Worlds on the battlefield? The one that's uh, that's cast is gonna stay, and the one that's already been there is gonna whoop be destroyed. So playing an Enchant World is a great way to get rid of another Enchant World, you know. And the Abyss in this case is also useful because it's gonna kill the hippies and the Setches. So. Yeah, I can, I can see the abyss happening here after sideboarding. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first go to the game and enjoy round number two of the Raging Bull series. 
Game number one, here we go. On the left, we have Leon with his Nether Void deck. So black and red, I believe he's on the play. Ooh, look at that opening hand of Ole here. Ole playing with Eureka bots, mainly blue and green, a little bit of black. There we see Leon starting with a Swamp. Actually taking it back, I guess it is Ola on the play then. Let's see what Ola can do. Island, we saw a lot of Moxen in there, right? Exactly. There are the Moxen. Mox Ruby, Mox Emerald, and just a pass. Needs four mana for that Tsuchi, if he has it, of course. Let's see if he can now uh, play it. Another Island, just a pass though. Does have a Trike in hand, and of course the Mana Drain, so he's got a counter up. Second black, tapping two black. Are we gonna see a sinkhole? There's a sinkhole. There we see a mana drain though. And with that two extra mana, he can cast it through Skellion next turn. He's gonna draw a card for turn. Another Mox. Playing a Bayou. Playing a Mox. Actually, I mean, he can use the two extra mana, keep two blue open, right? For potential counter magic. If you don't have it, then pretend that you have it. And uh, playing the uh, Triskelion here. So we turn three Triskelion. That's not too shabby. Four, four creature. And of course it has three plus one plus one counters that you can take off to deal damage to any one target. Let's see what Leon can do here. Going through his hand there. I think we see a factory. We see some lands for sure. Is he gonna play a stone rain? And here you can kind of see that, that that plan to destroy the lands isn't as effective when you're playing against fully powered decks like this. You really need to do that, um, you know, in combination with, there's the attack by the way for four, in combination with artifact destruction. And we do know, of course, that Leon has that in his deck as well. He does have that Shatterstorm, remember? So if he can find the Shatterstorm, that would be pretty cool. Would be a really good card to pull for him right now. Of course, then he does need the second red. There is a Mishra's Factory. Gonna tap three. If he's got a Setch Troll, you probably want to tap your factory for mana so you have a black open to regenerate, but it's not a Setch. Instead, it's Hypnotic Spectre, kind of forcing... Well, is he, is he really forcing Ola? Remember, Ola has, I believe, a Control Magic in play. He could play Control Magic now on the Hypnotic Spectre. That would make, uh, make uh, sense here. Exactly, that's what he does. I wanted to say he's kind of forcing Ola to use the counters from the Triskelion on... Um, you know, on the Hypnotic Spectre, but of course he had a better option with that Control Magic in hand, taking over the beautifully signed Hypnotic Spectre from Leon. I mean, it's looking really rough here for Leon. Can he do anything? Tapping three. Okay, another Hippie. At least that's something. You can use that to block the Hippie. Then again, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Ola now kills the Hippie of Leon so that he can attack with his stolen Hippie. Couldn't see that card though, but... Um, Sure, it's a spectacular one. Oh, there's a lightning bolt. That is pretty good. Four damage here for Leon. Gonna go to eight. And then there's that question for Ola. Does he want to use those counters? Of course, he can wait until the attack step. We see a Nether Void in hand there for Leon. Could consider playing that out. And he's gonna attack here with a 2-2 and of course if not expector. And he's taking the damage, gonna lose that card. What is it? Oh, it's a Eureka, okay, that makes perfect sense. He's not pumping the Mishra's factory, by the way. He could have pumped it with the other factory, giving it an extra point of damage. And exactly, they're discussing it now because he hasn't taken the damage yet. So he's gonna go to 16, but could have made it into a 3-3 and then Ola would have dropped to, to 15. Attacking here with the 4-4. Maybe there's a reason that uh, Leon didn't spend the mana. Maybe he wants to use the mana for something else. Not quite sure why that Mistress Factory is going to go away from the table here, to be honest. There's a Chaos Orb. And he's going to flip the orb. And now Ola needs to respond before he knows what the target is. And I think this is a good decision by Ola, not taking all the counters off, because that still makes it kind of a target. Gonna flip. Oh, it's a miss though. It is a miss. He used his factory as his own target. That is very unfortunate. I'm sure he was uh, flipping on the, on the Triskelion here, but that's unfortunate for Leon. There we see a strip mine. 
And I mean, all the land removal and now the strip mine, they just haven't been very effective because from the get-go, Ola has found those Moxen. Tapping six again. Are we going to see another Triskelion here hitting the board? Ooh, it's even better. Mahamoti Jin, Papa Moti, finding its way on the battlefield. That's five in the air, five power in the air. This is going to be very painful for Leon. That's it. Passing their turn. Well, actually, he's got... No, he doesn't. Yeah, I mean... I think he could have squeezed out one more turn here, but I mean, he was probably going to die anyway, but I would always go for the extra turn. You never know. Maybe you have a Wheel of Fortune and you find something else. Who knows? Probably would have lost, yes, but anyway, that's what I would have done. But we have, this is just the first game, so both players are going to dive into the sideboards and we're going to uh, catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's Leon on the play after losing that first one. We can already see uh, the hand of Ola here. Well, at least part of it. I see their Black Lotus, Tropical Island, Chris Kelly. And ooh, look at this opener from Leon. Turn one, Sol Ring. Pretty sweet. Are we going to see a set stroll perhaps next uh, turn for Leon? There's a Bayou from Ola. Taking the Bayou back. Choosing to play the Tropical Island instead. Mox Emerald. And okay, there's a Simbat. So Simbat, a 1-1 one, one from Arabian Nights. You can tap it. Draw a card. If it's a land, you can keep it. If it's not a land, you have to discard the card. So it's pretty good in combination with Sylvan Library, which is also in the deck here. Tapping four here. Oh, there's a Nether Void. Now, this is the kind of magic that Leon wants to play. Get that Nether Void out early. Put that tax on, on Ola so that he cannot play out those bots. Ola is going to play out now the Bayou, I guess. Or does he have other options? Doesn't have enough um, land now to play out a Sylvan. Remember, what Nether Void does, it puts a tax of three mana on every spell. And he's using the Simbat here. Tapping three. What could he play for three? A Mox, I guess. Oh, we yeah, are playing the Black Lotus. Because the Black Lotus now also has a casting cost of three. Now remember, this extra cost also counts for Leon. He also has to pay three extra for every spell. So not for lands, of course. Taking care of the Tropical Island here and passing the turn. So I feel Leon's deck is now much more doing what he wants to do. I guess the one thing that he misses here... Ooh, look at that Simbad doing work here, finding a Tropical Island. I think the one thing here that Leon is missing in his strategy, of course, is that early set stroll to put some pressure on or that Hypnotic Spectre. And of course, uh, Ola is able to find a lot of land uh, because of the Simbat also has that Black Lotus. So it's not ideal for Leon. And Leon just passing the turn here. Does have a Stone Rain in hand, but cannot cast it yet because of the extra cost of Nether Void. Remember, a Stone Rain is three to cast normally, but with the Nether Void, it's all of a sudden six to cast. And there we see uh, Ola here losing the Mind Twist to the Simbat. It's really cool to see him use the, uh, the Simbat. Ooh, and he's going to sack the Lotus for the Nether Void tax. Play a Suchi. I get this move. And that's a problem here for uh, for Leon. The question is, can he find... Ooh, there's a Shatter. Found a Shatter, and he has enough mana to play it out. Going to tap here. There we go. Destroying the Suchi. Now, remember, we're playing according to the Swedish old school rules. That means no mana burn. So no uh, mana burn for Ola here. Then he used the Simbat again. Oh, losing a mana drain. This is the thing with Simbat. It can be really good. And then he finds a land after that one. Do you see that? That is very unfortunate for Ola. Then again, I mean, he, he, he is finding the lands that he wants. So it's still doing what he wants it to do. Passing the turn or not. No. Tapping four mana. Ooh, is he going to play the Crumble? Crumble on Soaring. This is a good play, I think. Because now, of course, Leon's um, Nether Void is working against him. So Leon having five mana still cannot play out that uh, Stone Rain, which is really good right now, but he just cannot play it out. Needs one more mana. So it was a really good timing by Ola to take care of that Soul Ring. And he's going to use it again. What is he going to find? Oh, the Sylvan Gun! That would have been perfect for Oli. He's very unlucky here with the uh, with the Simbat. Because the cool thing about, about Sylvan is you can look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order, and then, of course, you're going to make sure that there are lands on top so you can uh, 
draw extra cards with your Simbet, right? You can find the lands, you can keep those in your hand. So Simbet Sylvan is a really neat combination. Here we see a, a sinkhole, by the way. Oh, look at that, losing Ancestral Recall. So he's, he's lost Mind Twist, Ancestral Recall, Mana Drain. I mean, it's insane. Sylvan Library, he's lost so many good cards to this Simbat. It is ridiculous. Still, I think it's a good play from him by using it because you need those lands. He's just unlucky, that's it. There's a Stone Rain. So really setting Ola back here on the lands. And like I said before, Leon's deck is now really doing what it wants to do. All that Leon's missing here is pressure. And look at that. Now he's going to attack with the same. But this is a neat little trick. After damage is dealt, untapping it with the mace. Finding a land. Look at him go. He's cheering. He's like, yeah, finally. I think you found two lands in total with the Simbat, and uh, and the rest of the time you've lost the Mind Twist, Ancestral Recall, Sylvan Library, and some other stuff. Tapping a lot here. There's Hypnotic Spectre, passing the turn, so let's see. Ola, of course, has that Maze of If, though, so that's a great answer to the Hypnotic Spectre. There's another Simbat, but he doesn't have enough land to play it, though, and he used the Simbat. Oh, again, losing the Sylvan. Then again, he doesn't have enough mana at the moment to even play out that Sylvan. Passing the turn. So the Nether Void is really doing work, and now the deck is starting to work for, uh, for Leon. What Leon needs here actually is one more uh, piece of land removal to take care of the Maze of If. I think I would even consider playing the Shatter on uh, the Mox here of Ola. And now, of course, Leon has two creatures on the battlefield. There we see uh, Ola using the Simbat again. Losing the Mox. Very unfortunate here for Ola. That Mox would have been great, because then he would have had enough mana to, for example, play out the Demonic Tutor that he has in hand. I mean, I think I would really use that Shatter exactly against the Mox. Yeah, this is a great, great play. Attacking here with both. Now he's going to maze the hippie, I guess. Exactly. Taking three. I mean, he's still on 20. Going to drop to uh, to 17. Oh, the drawn card for turn. What did he find? An abyss from the sideboard. Okay. There's a land. But because Leon uh, destroyed the emerald with the shatter, he doesn't have enough mana now to, for example, cast that demonic tutor. So that was a really good decision uh, by Leon. It looks like Ola has to discard a card now. Discarding a Brain Geyser. Yeah, Brain Geyser is way too expensive with the Nether Void on the battlefield. Also with the colors, I mean, I guess Ola could have Tranquility, but I don't think I saw it in there. Maybe in the sideboard. But besides the Tranquility and the Chaos Orb, it's really tough for Ola to get rid of enchantments. There, we see the single on the maze. Now he's in for business, attacking for five. And more importantly, Ola is going to lose cards. Oh, what card is he going to find? Going to take the five first. Yeah, Simbad gone. Okay, that's not too bad. I think if you're Ola, you really want to keep that demonic in hand. Going to go to 12. Oh, again, the Sylvan. Not finding lands. Looks like he already has a Eureka in hand as well. But I mean, Eureka is now seven because of the Nether Void. That Nether Void is really doing business. Because if Ola, of course, can, can find a way to cast the Eureka, he's home free, you know. But he's far away from that point. And there's another attack. Ola dropping to seven. Losing a card. There's the Eureka. Oh, kind of the, you know, the last hope for Ola. Drawing a card. I mean, he's got one more turn after this one. Losing to Suchi. Does he have to discard again? Don't think so, because he already lost a card to the uh, not Spectre earlier. Picking up the cards. Okay. I mean, again, just like in game one, I think, you know, you have one more turn to go. Why not try it? Then again, I mean, these players know that in these tournaments you have 50 minutes to play your game, so maybe there's a little bit of time pressure on you. They want to have enough 
time to play their uh, decisive game number three, so I get that as well. But uh, what an entertaining game number two, and Leon, it was just great to see your deck doing what it wants to do. I always, I always love that. I mean, regardless of who's playing it, when you've got a plan with your deck like you do, to see it, you know, work. The same thing goes for Ola. So Ola, I'm hoping that in game number three, you can give us like a very cool, successful Eureka move. That would be just fantastic. Anyway, we're going to let these players shuffle up and we're gonna, we are going to catch back up with them in game number three. Game number three, here we go. Ola on the play after losing game number two. Starting with a basic island passing the turn. We see some uh, copy artifacts there in hand. Let's see what Leon can do. We see a shatter. I think there's a sinkhole there as well starting with a swamp passing the turn mox pearl underground c copying the pearl so choosing to go for the ramp option passing the turn remember with four mana now we can cast uh, a suchi we also see a time twister in hand that could be one of the reasons why he wants to empty his hand pretty quickly sinkhole here now by leon on the underground c Tapping two more, there's the Sylvan. The first time in this match that he's managed to cast a Sylvan. If he can find a Simbat now, we can see that sweet synergy between Simbat and Sylvan. Let's first see uh, what his opponent can do here. There's a Mountain, is he gonna play it out? That's the big question. And then, are we gonna see a Nether Void? We're gonna see a Hypnotic Spectre instead in the pass. So a Spectre, I mean, it's just such an annoying card to play against because you, you you need to have an answer to the Spectre. You don't want to discard a card at random. If you could choose, that would be a whole different story, but that add random clause makes it such a difficult card to play against. You just don't want to take damage from it. There we see a Suchi. It looks like uh, Ola is going to take damage from the Hypnotic. And he is then going to lose a card. There is a Mishra's Factory. Gonna tap three again. Another Hypnotic Spectre attacking for two. This is a problem for Ola. All these Hypnotic Spectres. Gonna lose the middle card. Oh, it's a Time Twister. That is the card that he probably wanted to keep since his hand was almost empty. Could have emptied out his hand and get a fresh seven. He does have the trike still in hand though, so if he can play out the trike, at least he can kill one of the uh, one of the hippies. And Ola really in the tank here. I mean, he's got to decide now. The card that he chooses to pick is probably a card that he wants to play out ASAP as well, because I mean, he's looking at two hypnotic specters against him next turn. That means he's going to lose two more cards from his hand. Ooh, he's going to take an extra card. Okay. Players kind of discussing, did you take the damage from uh, the Hypnotic Spectre? I think he did. Dropping to 14, attack with the Suchi. And Leon here dropping to 15. Not quite sure what he wants to do with the dice. Okay, going to 16. I guess he was still on 19 from uh, previous game. Anyway, first damage that he's taken. Look at that. I mean, he's going to lose both Triskelions, right? Ay, ay, ay. Two trikes, I think, in the bin. Ah, oh, that is so painful for Ole here. And perfect for Leon. Is Leon, Leon going to win this match here? I mean, he's not there yet. He's looking at eight damage on the swing back with the Suchis as well, which is pretty problematic. Okay, here we see a Demonic Tutor. That could make a big difference. I mean, he's playing with Shatterstorm. He could go for Shatterstorm. Of course, he cannot play it out yet, but the next turn he could cast a Shatterstorm. That would be huge. Or does he have something better? Going through his hand again. Ooh, couldn't see that. I really wonder if it's uh, going to be the Shatterstorm. That would be really, really cool. You don't see a lot of Shatterstorms being cast. I mean, it's a great card. A lot of players play with artifacts. I think it's kind of underplayed, but I also understand why it doesn't see a lot of play. I mean, it's very tempting when you play with red to just put an extra shatter in and play with them. For example, go from three shatters to four shatters after sideboarding. And I mean, rem remember the Shatterstorm is, of course, a sorcery, you know, and it, 
and you tap down four mana, so you also slow yourself down, but it can be such a killer card against uh, the right decks, and I think against Ola's deck, it's a, it's a real problem. Anyway, Ola picked up one of the cards. He's probably going to swing in for eight. going to put Leon on eight. Let's see what card he found. Swinging in for eight. Is he going to jump with the factory? No, he's not. Going to go to eight. Okay, there's a maze. That is not too bad. You know, with the maze, he can stop one of the hippies. He only takes two. Going to go to eight as well. Next turn, he could swing in. I mean, it's difficult now. Let's see what card he picked up. Was it a shatter? Or are we going to see a shatter? There is the shatter. Wow, it's so cool to see a shatter. That is amazing. Annihilating the board here of Ola. I mean, it's amazing for... Just for me to see a shatter, but not for Ola, obviously. And it's amazing for Leon. But what an epic card. Attacking for six here. And I think this game is pretty much over. Ola taking four now. Going to drop to six. What can save him now? Look at the top three, of course. There's a time walk, it seems. Wow, the time walk would have been so good a turn earlier. Wow. I mean, this is tough. What else does he have? He's got the Simbad. Simbad's coming too late, though. I mean, I think if I would be Ola me, Yeah, he doesn't have enough mana to play out both, actually. Oh, this is so painful. Yeah, I'm going to go for the time we'll play. At least he gets to look at one card deeper. But, I mean, I think it's pretty much over. Eureka here. The card is not very helpful for him. Finding the Simbad, passing the turn. I mean... He can jump with the Simbad that buys him one more turn. And oh, he's got the Maze as well, actually. So he doesn't even have to jump. Could take four, go down to two. I think that's uh, that's a, the, the right thing to do here. There's the factory, animating the factory, attacking with everything here. Probably going to send back the factory because he can uh, pump the factory to three. Exactly, got to take uh, four here from the hippies, drop to two. And now we see Leon tapping three for a Satch Troll. Oh, man. It's looking really dire for Ole here. Last turn, last chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing really there. There's the Suchi, but that's not going to save him. That's it. Leon winning this match. And actually, I didn't expect him to win. Getting the sticker here for winning. And uh, that is pretty awesome. So Ola winning, uh, Ola, no, Ola losing, Leon winning here with his Nether Void deck. And uh, I really enjoyed both of these decks. Unfortunately, we couldn't really see Ola's deck going off with the Eureka. That would have been quite sweet. But um, yeah, it was really nice to see that Shatterstorm play in uh, game three. Thank you both for uh, showing your skills here on the channel. And you've brought beautiful decks to the table. Thank you so much for doing that. So uh, Leon, congratulations. And also thank you, Ola, for your beautiful deck. It's really nice. I like it. Uh, combining... Eureka with uh, with the robots. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, this was the match for today. Now, if you want to see more of the Raging Bull series 2023, this was just round number two. You know, we've got a lot more rounds coming. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you already have done that, thank you for being a sub of Timmy Talks. Please consider liking, sharing, and commenting on this video. All these things really help the channel move forward. And all these things are free as well. And talking about that stuff, you can also become a patron of the show, which is not free. You can become a sponsor of Timmy Talks. Help me to continue making this content for you guys. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and check out the options of becoming a patron. It already starts with $1 a month. And for that dollar, uh, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in the Timmy Talks online events. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Sigurdus, 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 S